On the agenda tonight, we're going to be exploring the reason as to why you don't know what you're listening to. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So this topic is something that I've spoken about before, but not in this context, because recently we took a look at Dua Lipa and Cindy Lauper, uh, who were performing at Glastonbury. And Cindy's performance was you know, totally live with the band, and Dua's performance was with a backing track and the backing track had vocals on it and her voice was mixed in with the backing track. So the reason though I want to make this video is because we're going to be having a look at, at Dua Lipa again and a video that is highlighting her real voice and her live vocals and her voice as it truly is. And I'm going to point out why it is so difficult in the current day music industry to know what is somebody singing and what is somebody's natural pitch accuracy and what is pitch correction and what's manipulated. Just to mention in that previous video I did say that Dua Lipa has a really accurate voice at least from what I can determine from what I've seen I think she is really accurate pitch wise. So I'm just gonna you know go on the record saying that but the reason that I think she's really accurate pitch wise is because I've been analyzing voices for years so I've watched a lot of performances by Dua Lipa that are you know live sessions on the radio all this kind of stuff the problem is that we know that radio shows get pitch corrected now we know obviously official releases get pitch corrected official YouTube videos get pitch corrected even videos that are on the official channel of the artist but might be looking like it's live that's then pitch corrected as well so yeah it is an industry standard so it means that it's a standard thing for it to be pitch corrected so it's really difficult to know how accurate somebody is vocally whether they have got a good sense of pitch or not anyway we'll jump into this video and this is a video showcasing her real voice if you want to run away with me, I know a galaxy and I could take you for a ride. I had a premonition that we fell into a rhythm where the music don't stop for life. Glitter in the sky, glitter in the eye, shining just the way I like. If you're feeling like you need a little bit of company, you met me at the perfect time. You want me, I want you, baby. My sugar boo, I'm levitating. The Milky Way, we're renegading, yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Moonlight, you're my starlight I need you all night Come on, dance with me I'm levitating Should we run the whole thing? So, I mean, right at the end At the bottom of the screen You won't be able to see it But it says Oh, it's for Evian The water, mineral water So this is part of an advert or something. This video that I'm looking at has maybe three or four million views, something like that. And the shorts version of this footage has had maybe 14 million views. And with that, it's going to this footage saying without auto tune, and then it's going to a studio track and saying with auto tune. So they're giving you the comparison between the two, but the person that's uploaded that video is assuming that this isn't auto-tuned or pitch corrected. And some people use auto-tune, but it's not auto-tuned, it's pitch correction, which is a manual process. So I think the people uploading the videos don't know the difference between the two in the first place, but they haven't actually done any testing on it. And it's just their opinion that they think, because of the way that this looks, they think that it must be natural. When we look at it in a little bit more detail, I'm just going to run it through so that you can see that to begin with, the camera is right by her side there. She looks at it and then walks backwards. And now there's a guy holding a camera right in front of her. As you can see here, she's now walking towards the camera and the cameraman's walking backwards and now he's disappeared. So already we know that this wasn't done in one shot as it's 
being made to look because the cameraman's disappeared and you could see that he was walking backwards because of the movement. So straight away, at some point, the audio that they're working with wasn't just in one continuous shot. They've worked with different bits of audio. So that, I mean, this kind of thing, just from a video perspective, starts to kind of raise questions uh, to me. And then as she turns around, she's now looking forward. I mean, you could say that this is still maybe that same first shot. And here she has her hand up on her chest. And when she turns around, you'll see that now it's out by her side. So again, this is from another shot uh, showing that there have been multiple takes of this, at least the video. But if there are multiple takes of the video, and then here, she's turned around to face the camera at the back and now is facing forwards. So I hope this is starting to make a little bit more sense that they've done lots of different angles, lots of different shots. So therefore you've got to assume that they've done lots of different natural vocal attempts. I mean, it's these kinds of details that we can kind of look out for. Oh, and here we go. The cameraman who's now standing behind her again has disappeared from this long shot. So, and the people standing next to her have disappeared from this long shot. <laughs> so yeah, the more you go through it, and then there should be somebody walking up to her from here to then get a really close up shot. And that person's now disappeared again, because uh, now it's just Dua Lipa on stage by herself. Is the audio a comp take of all the best bits of those three or four different takes? Or is it a comp take that's then pitch corrected? Or is it one take from one of the shots that was then pitch corrected afterwards? Or was it one take that was the natural voice and then they decided not to edit the audio at all, but do loads of editing just with the video section? That doesn't really stack up for me. The amount of effort they're putting in for the, just this verse and chorus to make it look really good, I think they'd spend time trying to get it to sound really good as well. We know that the best voices of all time hit these lines, you know, maybe a few times in a whole performance, but not over and over and over again. And, you know, as I go through this, you know, we've got a lot of lines kind of being directly hit. And we know that that's especially a cappella like this. We, we know that that's not how vocal cords work, that they don't conform to something like this because this is a piano where these lines are. So um, when vocal cords vibrate, they go sharp, they go flat. I would put a big question mark over this. And this is why it's so difficult for people to know what's going on. What are they listening to? What are you listening to on the internet? Because if I'm putting a question mark over this, which is a video of her real voice, then people might be listening to this thinking it's a real voice. But to me, there's a lot of A440 being hit here. So anyway, I'll move on to the next performance. And this is now Dua Lipa performing with a guitarist. To say the first goodbye. Had to love and lose a hundred million times Had to get it wrong to know just what I like Now I'm falling And what I, what I do like, and the thing about Dua Lipa's voice is she's got this really cool sharp vibrato So what I mean is, have a listen I like Na -la. She goes, ah. she goes above the note and you'll be able to hear that, ah, you know, when I slow it down. Have a listen. I like. La so she's actually going a semitone above the note that she's singing. So when she hits that pitch, she's then kind of throwing your ear off in, in a different direction. But it's such... A, a unique sound and uh, yeah a few singers do it a lot you know lots of singers do it but rather than going nah, which is a vibrato going below the note just putting that ah, slightly above is just a lot more dramatic but anyway yeah back into this a again we, we, we're really accurate here I'm leaning towards giving Dua Lipa the benefit of the doubt here but again it's an official release and sadly because pitch correction is an industry standard, it means that you've got to assume as standard that it's being used. And that's the massive problem that singers like Dua Lipa might be this accurate, but because it's normal that it's going to be applied, then you've got to assume that she isn't this accurate, that it's 
manipulated. And the thing is that, you know, having a quick run through, you can see that she is slightly flat here, but you know, you can do that with pitch correction. You can leave in bits and you can correct other bits. So again, you can't conclusively, I can't conclusively say that this is a totally natural vocal cord that hasn't been manipulated. Um, just because of the consistency of hitting A440. So, um, as we run through, let's see if we've got the next performance here. I'm not a fool, not a fool, not a fool. No, we are not fooling anyone. Now, this is the kind of thing where the D4 was noticeably flat. So, you think, well, that probably would have been pitch corrected. Thinking of it, maybe I was wrong, I was wrong. I was wrong. And this is the kind of thing where now, when she gets into her upper register, she's absolutely bang on this A4. And considering what I just said, that you'd think that previous note would have been pitch corrected, then I start to think, well, this is just her voice now, that she is hitting this A4, just bang over the line, just as a byproduct of having a great voice. And by the way, I have isolated her vocals. There's accompaniment in these performances apart from the first one so yeah we're just listening to her voice that's something that i've done so we can concentrate on it come back to me baby we go like this house hey oh baby come on let me get to know you just another chance so that i could show that i won't let you down and run right now this has straight away got more of a natural vocal sound and look to it because here this is you know what we get all the time with great voices the a4 she's bang on and then when she comes back to the a4 again she's now slightly sharp and she actually drifts quite a lot sharp let me see that I could show that I won't let you down. oh that was actually uh, yeah supposed to be the a sharp four so she was slightly flat so she was sharp of the note that she'd been singing previously and was flat of the note above that she would have been pitch corrected to. So this particular vocal, I'd say for me, it, yeah, is absolutely genuine because her voice is reacting more like a voice with not being conform or not conforming and not, not being calibrated to these lines. It's free to go where it goes. Run. No, I won't let you down and run. I be the and again, you know, slightly flat here, which is great. Um, descended through the note here and then was on the line for this little section here, but certainly not constantly kind of on this line all the time. And again, just ended that phrase uh, a little bit sharp. I give you the wine. Yeah, and absolutely bang on here. Yeah, I think this is more kind of just a reverb that was taking over. I seem blue, I seem blue. Yeah, so here we go. That I seem blue was really quite sharp. It's actually a, a semitone higher than it should have been. And then she came down onto the C4. So it just made that quick correction with her pitch in order to m now make it more accurate. I seem blue. And then she was actually flat and went up. So that last one. For me, yeah, totally genuine. My sleep at night, making myself crazy. Out of my mind, out of my mind. Rolling down and ready, I'm hoping you would save me. Too many times, too many times. My love, he makes me feel like nobody else. Nobody else. Yeah, so here again, you know, I would say that this sounds like a natural vocal, but you can start to get an appreciation of how accurate she is, where, you know, she's pretty much bang on there. And then as we go through, I mean, yeah, we, we're sharp here, but when she goes to notes like this, uh, she comes down to the E4 and she comes down to the E4 again. And I mean, this interval is absolutely spot on. Look at the peak sharp of the F4, that that is pretty much exactly the same. So her voice can do this, but it's not going to be 
the same as pitch correction because pitch correction is an accuracy that you, you can't achieve and Dua Lipa can't achieve. So when you see the natural voice, you start to see all the variation in there. Woman, he doesn't love me, so I don't stop. Yeah, and there, I mean, that is you know, noticeably flat and um, flat of the line and flat. And when I say flat, it means below the line. It's not an insult to say that it's either flat or sharp. So, yeah, again, natural voice for me here. This is showing that her intervals are really accurate, but not to the point of pitch correction, where it's going to be over the line all the time. She is really accurate, but it drifts ever so slightly because these are human vocal cords. And again, this this is going up to the D4 again, and look at where this peak is, look at where that peak is, look at where that peak is, and look at where that peak is. She's hit the same note four times, and each time she's hit that note, her voice or her pitch is in a different place. So now this is fan footage and I love this kind of thing because when fans are filming at shows you get to hear the original vocal before it's pitch corrected and then released online either in a YouTube video or in anything for TV that's always going to be pitch corrected from live shows if you're watching it on TV whereas this fan footage is how it actually sounds and because of that, you can see where a natural voice lands. And it's really important just to put a spotlight on this because people that are learning to sing might be huge fans of Dua Lipa and might, you know, get analysis software and, you know, maybe analyze pitch, look at these graphs, and then they might think, oh, I'm not as accurate as Dua Lipa on her song that she's released, which they don't know has been pitch corrected. So on the releases, she will be over these lines all the time, but when she actually sings with her human voice, it's not gonna be on the lines all the time because she has exactly the same equipment as everybody else has, human vocal cords. So she doesn't have any advantage over somebody who's learning to sing. She's trained her voice to be this accurate. When I say this accurate, just in general, in order to sing a melody, she's not been looking at these lines and trying to hit them. You know, when she's singing this live, she hasn't got pitch monitoring software on her phone and she's trying to hit the lines while singing. You'll hit the lines with a great voice just as a byproduct, like I said earlier. So this is it. That this kind of thing, being this close to the line, is absolutely fine. And you can see how you know she's really close to the line here. And even this here, being between notes. I don't know, I think I feel like there's gotta be some kind of revolution where we've got to normalize this on studio releases so that we're not aiming and, and young singers, the next generation, aren't aiming for something that is impossible to attain. And it'll get to the point where somebody will say, oh, I'm a singer. And then people will say, oh, sing us a song. And they say, oh, well, no, because I haven't got pitch correction. I, I can't sing it without getting it on the lines. And they say, well, we'll just sing it naturally. And, th and they'll say, well, no, I haven't trained to do that because the software does it for me. But it, this is just highlighting how a voice like Dua Lipa's, which is amazing, from a pitch perspective, is still in between notes because it's normal, it happens. And look at that, this C5, every time she went up to it, she was flat of it, but this is close enough. And this is where it's important to listen to the voice rather than look at it. Because if we're looking at it, you'd say, oh, she missed that note. She's sharp here. She's almost between notes here and then she ends flat. But, I mean, you can point that out for 
here as well, sharp, sharp. So where she was flat, she's now sharp, now she's between notes. But don't look at the screen. I'm going to turn it off, have a listen to it. That sounds so consistent vocally, even though if somebody was looking at that and as standard, that would be changed. That would be corrected. You know, I think young singers need to look at this and see that their favorite singer is just like them. That, you know, that's what singing is, especially singing live. It is what it is. So yeah, uh, great to see at the end here. And when you see this kind of thing, when you go back to looking at other vocals that are really on the lines all the time, for me, yeah, it's a little bit night and day as to then distinguish what is pitch correct and what isn't. But for people that don't know and, and don't read pitch graphs and don't know how to interpret what they're listening to, it's really difficult nowadays to know what you're listening to. And you've just got to assume it's pitch corrected because that, that is the industry standard. So we're at a point where there can be one person who's starting an argument saying Dua Lipa uses pitch correction. And another person could be arguing saying, no, she doesn't. She's got an amazing voice. She's just that good. So this person is right. And this person's right. She's got a great voice. So that argument it's going to be never ending because they're both right. As a final point, I want to show you on screen the song Levitating. And I've just run this through the pitch monitoring software. I don't want this video to go on for too long, but you can see straight away that this is Dua Lipa's voice in the studio. So she's been heavily pitch corrected. And as you go through this whole thing, you'll see that wherever there's a note that's held for any length of time, it'll be directly over these lines. And I mean, that one's a little bit sharp. So tiny bit of variation there. And, you know, directly over the line, directly over the line, directly over the line. I, I don't know. I don't think the industry is going to do away with pitch correcting vocals because it's in their interest to do it because it means that great vocalists sound exactly the same as vocalists that can't sing very accurately uh, because they, they get pitch corrected. So if you're making a great voice stuck on these lines, and you can take a voice that isn't very good and stick them on these lines, then the music industry's quids in. It means that every singer they have on their roster is going to sound the same. So it means they're going to make potentially just as much money from everybody because there's no way for Joe Public to determine what's a great voice and what's a not so good voice because the voices all have great pitch and um, because the software is doing that for them and therefore they're all going to sound the same. So yeah, they're just if anything, uh, normalizing everybody's voices and to my mind, taking away the artistry and taking away the personality of the vocalist. I listen to multiple versions of you know songs, live performances uh, from an artist, also listen to their studio releases to get a baseline of their voice naturally and with pitch correction. So then you can start to see where, yeah, they, they tend to drift sharp, they tend to go flat. And everybody has unique vocal traits. So once you start to see those, when you then see their voice on lines all the time, you know that, oh, well, well this isn't how their voice works. With you know, Dua Lipa's voice, you know, we, we've seen in the live performance that she's going sharp and flat and she has that natural variation to her voice, even when maintaining the same note. So when she is hitting a pitch all the time, it, it's never directly over that line throughout a whole song. So thank you guys for requesting an explanation on pitch correction and how to tell. It's going to be really difficult unless you've got really sensitive ears or unless you're analyzing things in detail. But even still, when you are analyzing things, if you've not got a baseline of somebody's voice as to how their voice naturally drifts and, and shifts, then when somebody's close to a line, you might think that's pitch corrected. But it, it isn't always. Sometimes that is just a byproduct of having a great voice, but it's certainly not on the lines all the time. Uh, that, that's never going to happen. So anyway, thank you guys. Keep those requests and suggestions coming in the comment section below. As always, let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Rock!